Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to continue our cool command series. We're going to take a look at the show interfaces counter errors command. This is one of my favorite troubleshooting commands for switches. It gives you a little more detail into the errors that you can see on a switch port. And as always, the output may depend on your platform slash iOS slash interface type. As you can see here, this output is from a 3750 on a fast Ethernet port. And then this example down is from a 6509 on a, a gigabit Ethernet port. As you can see, there's some extra errors that are shown with this output. So I have a console connection to a 3750 switch and actually the laptop that I'm recording this on is connected to gig 1 slash 0 slash 1 on that switch. I just want to walk you through a couple of variations of this command. So show interfaces and I very rarely type out this whole thing. And you can see there's a grip of different options you have for this but we want to go counters and then from here You've got a few different choices, and actually all of these are really good, but we're not going to touch on those today. So now if you type it in this way, it's going to, um, I think there's actually one more option you can put on their module, but we're not going to deal with that. Uh, if you type it in this way, it's going to give you the errors for all the interface, and as you can see, pretty clean on this switch, because <laughs> I just cleared the counters, and there's nothing else connected here. But that's generally not the best way to take a look at this. What you're going to do is you're going to want to specify a port and this is going to give you the errors that are specific to the port and this is the port that is connected to this laptop no errors so far and you may not recognize all these errors because generally if you do a show int uh, begin error so you can see input errors um, CRCs you can also see interface resets collisions output errors but you can see that some of these you know they got late collisions multi collisions single collisions others for half duplex excessive collisions same thing and then you've got alignment errors, FCS. So some of this is knowing what these errors are, and we'll touch that in just a bit here. But you can see that you get more detail as to what the actual errors are with this command. And where this comes in handy, a lot of times you'll be troubleshooting errors with um, an end user or a server admin, and they might say, oh man, this is slow, or "There's the, my, my application is goofed up. You trace it down to the port, and you want to see if there's any errors on there. And you can do that with the show interfaces, and then you can see, you know, you get... 175 input errors, 174 CRCs, and use that for troubleshooting. But if you do the show interface, specify the port, and then counter errors, you get FCS errors and then receive errors. And actually, these are more specific errors and can help you better troubleshoot the issue. Uh, this little bit down here is taken directly from Cisco documentation. So what we're actually seeing here is that the device is connected to this port is running in half duplex mode. And this will happen quite a bit. You'll get duplex mismatches if you've hard set the port on your switch and the other side is set to auto negotiate. You can get a duplex mismatch and we'll take a look at that on the command line. Here it shows you these FCS errors uh, which is frame check sequence I believe and then these receive errors and directly from the documentation it'll tell you if, you, if the FCS CRC alignment or run errors increase check for duplex mismatch. So this is a really good bit of troubleshooting that if these errors are incrementing you have a pretty good chance that the device on the other side is running in half duplex mode. There's a Cisco document that I will link to in this lesson that gives you the name of the counters as well as a description. This is very good information to keep on hand. I actually have this printed out at my desk so that when you're looking at this output you can quickly take a look at the uh, type of errors and find out what they are. I'm not going to go through all these. Like I said, take a look at this on your own, but you know, you can see here that runs, it'll give you a definition of what runt is. It's smaller than 64 bytes with a bad uh, FCS value. So this is really nice just to give you an idea of what you're looking at as far as the errors. But the next bit I'm going to show you is actually probably more important. And this table is in that same troubleshooting document that I'll have linked for you and this is really a gold mine information here because what you can do here is you can take a look at the counters and in that example that we had we had FCS um, errors that were incrementing as well as receive errors and you can take a look at this and it'll give you possible causes now these aren't written in stone but it's going to give you a good idea of why this is happening it says right here these are the result of collisions at half duplex duplex mix match bad hardware blah 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 from this we can tell that we're probably looking at a duplex mismatch on the other side and we can go ahead and work with the end user or server support there to get that resolved. So let's take a look at this command in action. What I've got here is I've got an application that uh, shows me my NIC settings on my PC. Unfortunately I'm recording this on a Windows box. I've got it set for, I go here to the configurations. It's set to uh, auto negotiate and this is actually a gig NIC so it can go up to gig speed 
So right now I've got it set to auto negotiate and it's negotiating with the switch to gig full. So what happens a lot of times is that the uh, end user device will be set to auto negotiate and your switch might not be set to auto negotiate. So by default on Cisco switches you are running auto negotiate on the ports. So in this case it's going to negotiate your speed and duplex but you can hard set these by specifying a speed. In this case we're going to set this to 100 megs and I'm going to set the duplex to full. So when you do that you're actually disabling auto negotiation on the port. So now if I break out of here and I do a show int g1 slash 1 slash 0 status another one of my favorite commands. You can see that we're connected um, we're on VLAN 100 which is neither here nor there for this example and we have our speed hard set to 100 full. If these were auto negotiated you would see a lowercase a with a hyphen in front of this and we're up and I can probably ping that's the IP address of my laptop and we're pinging so we look good here but if we go back over to the laptop here we're still on auto negotiate what you can see happened here was that it negotiated because auto negotiation has been turned off on the switch it's trying to auto negotiate and this is one of the goofy bits with auto negotiation if one side has it disabled is that a lot of times it will negotiate to half duplex which means we're gonna have collisions on our ports and I'm going to go ahead and send some pings to my switch let's see if we can get any collision I'm going to go ahead and ping back to my laptop so we're gonna have a bunch of traffic on here okay so what I'm doing now is I'm just sending a bunch of pings I'm sending 10,000 pings and I've cranked the size up to 18,000 bytes and I'm sending them over from the switch to my um, laptop and you can see here the uh, bangs are good the periods are bad so we're getting some drop packets here this is on the laptop side I'm pinging towards the uh, I'm pinging the switch and I'm using 10,000 byte packets these are obviously really big packets but I'm just trying to put a bunch of uh, traffic on here because what's going on right now is that the switch is running in full duplex mode so there shouldn't be any collisions but the laptop is running in half duplex mode so it's going to have collisions and you can see we have some collisions here what this is showing us is that this is running in half duplex okay so I stopped the pings on both sides generally you're not gonna have visibility into the end device if you do bully for you and this will be a whole lot easier to fix there's nothing in Windows that could change with newer versions of Windows I'm running XP that will show you what the operational status of at least the duplex is uh, you can go look in there you can set it you know in this case it's been set to auto uh, this is what you would get in the windows output as well uh, and you could see you could set this to auto 10 half 100 you know whatever it's set to auto but you don't know what it's actually running at so in this case it's negotiated to 100 half so your end user calls you and they say oh we're having problems with this we well, go take a look at your switch and you can say well it's connected at 100 and full that oh, looks good to me we can see that we do have errors. We have input errors and CRCs. Uh, it doesn't give us a full view of this, but if we now go ahead and use our new handy command, you can see here that we've got FCS errors and receive errors. And if you remember from that slide, uh, Cisco will tell you that that generally points to a duplex mismatch. So in this case, you know we we don't see it on we don't see the duplex mismatch on our side. Let's say it is a situation where this is a server and your procedure for servers is that they have to be hard set. You've got your set side set to 100 full, and the server guy's telling you no, I've got my side set to 100 full as well. Well, you can tell well this isn't consistent with this because if you were hard set to 100 full, I should not be seeing these errors. Can you please go and check to make sure you're not in half duplex? So that's basically it. It's a great command to know about. Good for troubleshooting. You're gonna want to do is you're going to want to keep a copy of this or a link to this um, possible causes document because this will help you out quite a bit because while I use this quite often to uh, troubleshoot speed duplex mismatches it's also good for other things when you start seeing runs or giants on here you can check MTU settings alignment errors if you see a bunch of these it could be duplex mismatch but it can also be something wrong with the uh, NIC so it's really good to have a copy of this available and use this as another weapon in your troubleshooting arsenal. So that's going to wrap this up. Uh, hopefully you find this command as cool as I do. Thank you as always for joining me in the Packet Lab, and I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.